Hi, today I'll be analyzing Sermon to the Birds by St. Francis of Assisi. Some context first. St. Francis is said to have had much love for animals with special fondness for birds. He referred to all creatures as his brothers and sisters. And legend has it that wild animals had no fear of Francis and even came to him to seek refuge from harm. This particular sermon comes from a book called Little Flowers, which is a collection of legends and folklore that sprang up after his death. One account describes how one day, while St. Francis was travelling with his companions, they happened upon a place in the road where birds filled the trees on either side. Francis told his companions to wait for him while he went to preach to his sisters, the birds. The birds surrounded him, intrigued by the power of his voice, and not one of them flew away. For this particular speech, we will be looking heavily at the undertones and the kind of meaning intended because the speech in itself or the sermon in itself is quite short and will not make a lot of sense if not understood with those lenses. He says, My little sisters, the birds, much bounden are ye unto God, your creator, and always in every place ought ye to praise him, for that he hath given you liberty to fly about everywhere, and hath also given you double and triple raiment. Moreover, he preserved your seed in the ark of Noah, that your race might not perish out of the world. Still more are ye beholden to him, for the element of the air which he hath appointed for you. What he is doing right now is, right in the beginning we see how he refers to the birds as his little sisters. There is a kind of universality of love in St. Francis's mind. He does not refer to birds and animals as other creatures with no relation towards human beings. In fact, he puts them at kind of a par by calling them sisters. And then he says, you are much bounden unto God your creator. It is important to note here that while this sermon is to the birds, it is not necessarily for the birds because it is not only towards birds that all of the speech's contents are actually valid. And you will come to understand that everything he says might actually be more towards human beings. He says then, He had given you liberty to fly about everywhere and that is why you should always praise him in every place. Here you might think, is he complaining about not being a bird himself? Because many poets do that. They complain about not being birds, not having that kind of liberty. But perhaps what he is doing instead is that he's instigating human beings. He's trying to tell them that they also have the liberty to go around in a lot of places. And that is why they also ought to praise God in every place. We know that St. Francis actually went and met Muslim leaders and kings and leaders of other countries that were not Christian and tried to appeal to them, tried to proselytize there. So is that what he's trying to imply? Is he trying to tell to the people that you should praise Lord and you should actually spread his word? He then says he had given you double and triple raiment. And by that he's referring to the fur on their body. He's referring to their feathers. He's talking about how God gave them not just one, but double or triple pair of clothes for their body. And then he says that you have to be grateful because he preserved your seed in the ark of Noah, that your race might not perish out of the world, something that is also valid for humans. Still more are ye beholden to him for the element of the air which he hath appointed for you. We have to understand here that this appointment of air is towards birds, but the word appointed here is special because we have read in the Genesis that he also appointed the resources of the world for human beings. So we are also beholden to the Creator for that gift to us. Beyond all this, ye sow not, neither do you reap, and God feedeth you, and giveth you the streams and fountains for your drink, the mountains and valleys for your refuge, and the high trees are whereon you make your nests. Here we see the kind of a reference, an allusion to paradise. We see that before the first sin was committed, it is said, that in paradise, Adam and Eve did not really have to reap. They did not really have to cultivate. God feeded them because they had, the, they had the gardens in the paradise for them where they could eat plentifully. They did not need to cultivate. They did not need 
to store water. Now though, human beings have to do that. But even if they do have to do that, God still provides. God still provides us with food and with water and he gives that to us naturally and for free. The mountains and valleys for your refuge and the high trees whereon to make your nests. And because ye know not how to spin or sew, God clotheth you, you and your children. When he's talking about this particular part, we have to understand that he also talks about how human civilization as we have evolved, we later on came to build houses to take our refuge. But the mountains and valleys are still available to us. We still have the trees, we still have the mountains and the valleys. When he talks about how God clotheth you, it is important to note that St. Francis himself was the son of a cloth merchant. And before he actually entered his life as a priest, as somebody who was so deeply involved in religion, he is said to have stripped off his clothes when he was actually giving up his, his patrimony, when he actually renounced his father. He stripped off his clothes and there was this protest. There was a kind of a naked protest that he is doing. And he does not see degradation in that kind of nakedness as God has given us this body and it is our shame because of which we cover it. So God has already clothed us and God has clothed these birds, them and their children. This allusion to them and their children is something that's important to note because such kind of clothing was deprived from St. Francis himself when he actually gave up his patrimony, when he renounces his father. He then says, Wherefore your creator loves you so much, seeing that he had bestowed on you so many benefits. Again, are these benefits exclusive to birds? No, these benefits are also something that human beings get. And our creator loves us so much that we are also getting these benefits. And therefore, my little sisters, beware of the sin of ingratitude and study always to give praises unto Lord. When he says this, we have to understand when he's saying my little sisters, he's not referring only to the birds. He's referring to everybody. He's referring to the humans. And he's telling them that you cannot have this kind of an ungratefulness in yourself to not praise Lord. When he says study always, you wonder, can birds study? Birds can't study. Human beings can study. So when he's saying this, when he's giving this call to action, then that call to action is towards human beings. In this entire speech, there are undertones of some kind of a simplicity of living. We see that when he refers to the mountains, when he refers to the valleys, when he refers to streams, and when he refers to no sowing or reaping, he is basically talking about how we already have everything that God gives us. Whatever wealth we are so boastful of and proud of is something that is artifice. It is over and extra. It is beyond our means. It is beyond our necessities, rather. And that is something which is very important to note because St. Francis preached poverty. For him, poverty was something that carried great respect. And he believed that that poverty was necessary to be in the presence of God. And that is something which he is also trying to preach through this entire sermon, which again extols the virtue of simplicity of nature. And he talks about how we need to praise God for what he has given us. And the entire sermon hence becomes very, very political in a way. Because as compared to the highly organized structure of the Vatican of those days, St. Francis actually decided to rebel in a way when he goes ahead and creates an order where poverty is venerated and simplicity is venerated, when he calls birds and animals his brothers and sisters, when he calls the sun his brother and the moon his sister, he's talking to a universality of creation and he is actually being able to create a kind of a faith that is much more universal than traditional religion, which is why St. Francis perhaps is one of the most reputed and known saints in the world. Again, this sermon becomes something that has to be understood on a very deep level and I might not have been able to do that in these few minutes. 
So I welcome you to think more about this and actually be able to understand what exactly is it that he meant? What exactly is it that he preached? And again, the principal question, was the sermon only to the birds? Was the sermon only for the birds? Or was it for all of us? With that, we come to the end of this video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed it and comment to let me know what speech I should analyze next. Thank you.